actually lived in the neighborhood around Coney. Although I work uptown in uh, what's called it now, Center for Self Security, but we get people jobs. You know, people don't work. And uh, this is uh, a Sunday, a regular Sunday devotional. It's called Interfaith. Uh, people don't have to have any particular, uh, you know, we have to believe in anything, just faith. And uh, as well as we do work with uh, the other churches in the area too. Uh, we are a, a, we are what we call the newest worldwide independent religion. We call it Baha'i Faith. And if you look behind me, where it says put Baha'i believe in, it's pretty much what everybody else believes in. And it takes it one step further and where it makes us more responsible. Since we don't have any ministers as such, we have leaders that work inside like as a leader going on the stage right now. And uh, but everybody takes responsibility. They just you know right they you come to church. Um, like I'm here on Sunday, but it's not like everybody goes to church on Sunday. Some people they do stuff during the week at their homes, whatever they want to do it. Mm -hmm. That's what these were written by somebody or this is part of the Oh no, I was thinking, I'm sorry, I just studied the King James Version. I'm just trying to <laughs> show up, give yourself a God before. I just wanted to read something about it. Yeah, um, there's something I just read that uh, I just see uh, comfortably for the word of God. Is, um, it says, not associated with the ungodly. Oh my son, the company of the ungodly increases sorrow. With fellowship with the righteous cleanses the rust from off the heart. He that seeketh his communion with God, let him be take or take himself to the uh, companionship of his loved ones. He that desire to hearken to the word of God, let him give ear to the words of his chosen ones. The reason I chose that is because as we had met in, in, uh, in the park and talking about God and dealing with people who try to be ungodly and associate in uh, a situation like this where we're at a round table makes us understand that if you're in the mix of God, Two or three gathered in my name, you know, touching anything on earth, you know, there he is in the midst of us. So hopefully, God can be in the midst of a conversation and prayer. That's when we can choose something, uh, you know, a God will not step you know, with, the, with the God that will not step. Well, it was uh, short, it was a lot smaller than I expected. Um, I'm used to going to a Christian church, so there's a lot of people, and uh, there was no pasture. I thought was interesting and it was a lot, you know, more small and more, I guess, intimate with the way they pass around the prayers and stuff. Did the not participate and just listen, I could do that, or if I wanted to share what I was feeling, I could do that. Is that different from um, what you experienced in the past when you go to church? Yeah, uh, when, you know, Methodists, you just pretty much sit in the, sit in the rows and, uh, you know, you, everybody says one, you know, prayer that pastor picks out, you know, predetermined, and that's basically it. You're pretty much just listening to whatever stories. Well, I mean, how how likely are you to um, to ever attend or recommend attending another devotional meeting like that? I would recommend it. I, mean, I, think, I think it's a good educational, you know, purposes like that, and like just to see how other people view God and religion, as he has to tell that Saturday or Sunday, so. It differs a lot in the fact that um, I'm used to structured religious services. I come from a Methodist background, and I'm used to, I'm actually used to schedule. My interpretation of the service was that it was, uh, it was very casual. Um, I thought it was very modern um, compared to other, other religion service, uh, religious services I've attended. I, um, it was really interesting how interactive everyone was. The, the leader, well, actually he said he wasn't a leader, um, but the man who kind of helped guide us, he told us that uh, everyone equally participates, so I think that just goes to prove one of their principal uh, foundations of the religion is equality, and you see that even in the devotional meeting, um, they're pretty equal with everyone, even newcomers like us, we got to participate as much as the next guy, so, so that was pretty cool. Don't give it to me at the beginning of service, follow it, you know, to the T, and, 
and you really don't say much. You just kind of go with what um, ever whoever's up at the um, pulpit. My first impression, um, just looking from the outside of the building, is they said it actually it used to be stores. So I didn't think it looked like a store. I was hoping to get to see a cool temple, like the ones there are in Iran and stuff, but uh, I guess you'd have to go to a place where it's more widespread. But it does not look very much like a church. It's just um, kind of just a empty room with a bunch of chairs in it. It's very basic. Uh, I found the religion very boring. Um, I feel some of other religions, especially uh, Methodist Christianity, sometimes has very antique um, feel to it in the sense that it hasn't kind of um, adapted to new society, new technology and stuff. I mean, there wasn't lots of technology in this one in, um, involved, but they do involve a lot of reason. I know it was the age of reason with Henry Thoreau and stuff like that. Um, people started seeing religion differently and science differently. So. I feel this is a lot more modern, which is kind of needed in some other places. Just to like a structured service that you receive like an outline of how the service is going to be when you come in. Um, you have kind of an order that you follow that's every that's every service so you can kind of predict what the service goes. And they don't really do that there. It's just kind of, uh, they go with the flow basically. Whatever. Yeah, what was your interpretation of the service? Um, it's very different than what I'm used to. Um, everyone got to be involved. They didn't have like an official pastor who took over the, the service and led. Um, it was just kind of everybody got to read the books of prayer and pick out a prayer that, that they felt led by. They got to read it and kind of give their opinion. Anybody can participate. What I'm used to, you don't usually do that. You have the pastor, he's the only person who really kind of talks and leads the service. It's very modern. It's kind of moved away from the um, strict schedule of having one pastor. It's moved to a modern thing of everyone gets to be incorporated and everyone gets to Tamar, what did you think about the church? Okay, and what was your first impression? Okay, and do you think you'll ever go back to a Bahi church? Or a Baha'i church, rather. <laughs> okay.